Hello, welcome to the special CUBE conversation. I'm John Furrier, host of the CUBE here in the Palo Alto studio. I'm about to drive up to San Francisco, but we have in San Francisco, Ruba Borno, who's the VP of Global Specialists and Partners at AWS. She's there at the Startup Partner Summit with AWS. Ruba, great to see you. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, John. I'm so excited to talk about AWS's work with our startup partners, the importance of startups to AWS and how we're supporting their growth. This is going to be our 14th year covering reInvent um, and watch the growth of uh, startups from day one and now the enterprises and now obviously global phenomenon with cloud computing. You head up all the partner, Amazon Web Services partner networks which includes specialists, alliances, partners. You're working with the top leaders and the innovators. One of the big areas that Matt Garman and I talked about uh, recently uh, here on theCUBE was the focus of startups. Never forgetting the startups, key part of the AWS growth. You're there now with the Partner Summit. Give us an update on what you guys are talking about. What are the innovation conversations? As this next bridge to the future gets built with generative AI, you're seeing a whole nother shift of how data is being used, how infrastructure is being leveraged with high performance computing for the masses with the cloud continues to be relevant and more relevant especially as data becomes key, what's the conversations? It, you just described it so well, John, the rich history that AWS has with startups. You know, it goes back more than 18 years. Uh, that's how long AWS has been in business and committed to working with startups. We've helped more startups build, launch, and scale than any other cloud provider. Um, in fact, over 280,000 startups choose to run their businesses on AWS. We're really proud of that. And more than 80% of unicorns that were identified identified by PitchBook in 2023 um, are running their businesses on AWS. And one of the programs that you've probably heard about and, and many of our startup founders know about is our AWS Activate Startup Program. A new startup around the world joins the AWS Activate Startup Program every 10 minutes. So to say that we are committed to startups is such an understatement. We are absolutely focused on supporting that next generation of businesses that want to build, launch, and scale on AWS. And that's why I'm here in San Francisco with several members of my leadership team. We're having roundtable discussions. We're doing breakout sessions because we're shaping our startup programs in the AWS partner network based on feedback from these founders. So we are having these discussions with them. They're telling us what programs they'd love to see, what incentives they need, and how we can jointly work together to do the number one most important thing, which is support customers in transforming their businesses. So really thrilled to be here. It's the first day of this uh, startup summit in San Francisco, and I can't wait to get more and more feedback and have more discussions from our startup partners around the world. You know, it's been exciting for us with theCUBE, uh, 15 years covering tech, we've seen and chronicled the story of AWS. We saw the growth of the startups, start startups that were you know, putting their credit card down, leveraging the building blocks, then become public companies, unicorns you mentioned, some decacorns in there, if we're going to get into the, the categorization. And then you, we've, you've guys grown that ecosystem. It's just been really the success story of, of AWS. And obviously the marketplace has been a, a huge success, continues to, to do billions of dollars in transactions, change how people are procuring and consuming software. But I want to get your thoughts on a, a trend we're seeing now, and I've never seen it in my 30 year career ever in, in these inflection points where there's both a back end innovation curve going on, disruptive enablement on the back end, and then a front end process improvement and starting to see the, the, this next level of, of entrepreneurship, problem solving in large enterprises where you got the SaaS apps evolving into agentic systems, which is going to be generative AI native applications retrofitted. And then a new category of what Matt and I were talking about, Matt Garman and I were talking about scalable apps. Last week, Climate Week in New York City, I was there interviewing companies that were changing the climate, the biosphere, uh, using big data and technology in the cloud to essentially change uh, our, our our earth, make it a better place. So you're seeing them use state of the art cloud. So they have to be a tech company and change the process. So you're seeing large scale apps we've never seen before and the retrofitting reshaping of the SaaS apps to be agent, agentic systems. I've never seen that both going on at the same time and you got to do both. So the question is one reaction to that 
And two, how is that changing your ecosystem? Because again, a lot of those startups now, now unicorns and successful public companies and growing private companies have to bring agents in. And this new classification of people solving real problems they couldn't solve five, 10 years ago with all the, all the infrastructure that's available on AWS. I love that question and that context, John. Um, it is really interesting to just kind of step back and look at the big picture of where we are with generative AI. And it's not just a buzzword. Um, I think that you know there have been questions of, is it hype or not? It's absolutely driving major impact and it's changing the way that every single industry is gonna operate. Every single function is doing business. Um, and what's so exciting is we're seeing customers achieving amazing top line and bottom line uh, wins off of generative AI solutions. Um, and so the startup uh, ecosystem is so critical to that. Uh, and so in June of this year, in June of 2024, AWS announced a commitment of $230 million to accelerate the creation of generative AI applications by startups around the world to take advantage and deliver on those innovations you just mentioned. All of that uh, innovation that you're seeing that's that's uh, helping the earth. I mean, I'll give you one example of a startup that's in, uh, in the generative AI accelerator that AWS launched. This is a company called Multiverse Computing. Uh, out of Spain. They use quantum algorithms to improve energy efficiency and cost of AI. I mean, one of the, the big things about AI is it is really heavy in terms of compute and energy needs. And so these startups are actually solving uh, some of the challenges so that we can continue to innovate using generative AI um, by making it more energy efficient, uh, more cost efficient for customers to uh, to be able to consume. So it's it's incredible to do that. Why? Because right next to them is another startup called Turbine AI, also out of Europe, out of Eastern Europe in Hungary. Turbine AI is using foundation models for cancer cell biology to accelerate cancer development. So you you need AI innovation to be able to solve. Uh, challenges like cancer cell biology, but you also need to make sure that we are taking care of the earth, doing it as energy efficient as possible. And so these two startups are actually really beneficial um, to each other, to the planet, to people. And we're so proud that they're part of our generative AI accelerator. Um, but that's that's just you know two examples I'm giving you of startups that we're interacting with. And that's why it's so important um, for us to continue to invest and see what incredible solutions are going to come out to help people and to help the planet. You know, one of the things I loved about Amazon was the, was the, the, the variable and the scale and the elasticity of the cloud startups that took advantage of that kind of gen one, this next level, you're starting to see uh, a full stack of capabilities up and down from infrastructure to, to, to the top of the stack with data and generative AI and all the things you're doing. What's the, what is the building blocks now? So if you had to go back and say, okay, the first wave was, uh, making it easier to provision infrastructure, get my app online uh, as a startup, and then you know, iterate through. Now you have um, larger scale opportunities. What is the problem that you guys solve for the startups now that was similar in context to the, the early days where, hey, I got compute on the provision of data center. Now I can go in and say, I go to Amazon because I don't want to do blank. What is the, what is the a value proposition for startups uh, with with the full build out of Amazon now, and obviously you guys have huge CapEx investments. We've been tracking that on SiliconANGLE and the Cube Research. You guys got tons of GPUs, you got Nitro, you got the infrastructure that Peter DeSantis is now overseeing. I mean, large scale. I mean, you're bringing basically supercomputing to the masses. So there's a lot more going on in the building blocks. What is the, what is the startup value proposition that's the easy to get going pitch? Yeah, it's the same uh, bread and butter that that has always built our business. We're so focused on working backwards from the customer, working backwards from the developer experience. They've always been our biggest advocates. So making sure that we continue to invest in the over 200 services that AWS has launched. You talked about infrastructure, compute, storage. We're moving up the stack as we talk about uh, Bedrock, which is our managed service that allows any customer uh, to be able to access the premier foundation models or any foundation models that they need in order to uh, use generative AI that best suits them, the right model for the right problem. And then we've developed Amazon Q that allows companies to integrate insights from multiple different services. We have over 40 integrations, whether it's Salesforce or ServiceNow, um, Datadog, and so on, to allow customers to be 
be able to get um, insights from all of those. Now, I mention those services because what you're going to hear is that our innovation now is very partner centric. We want to make sure that we are giving customers choice. We're giving customers access to the latest and greatest innovation. So if you're a startup integrating and developing with Bedrock, integrating with Amazon Q, allows them to be able to expose their innovation to a wide variety of customers. And if I were to say, what's the number one thing that, that startups value over anything else? It is speed. We've got a ton of services, a ton of innovation, and we will support them, but time is their most valuable asset. And so when we give them the breadth of services, the depth of services to quickly build on AWS, that's number one why they choose AWS. But then they also want speed to top line, speed to closing those marquee customers, speed to growing their revenue and access to customers. And so with the AWS Partner Network and through AWS Marketplace, which we've mentioned in this call, what's important for us is to help startups reach more customers, be relevant to more customers and grow their revenue. So I would say outside of the innovation that our, our teams offer out, uh, across all of AWS, we want to help yeah. startups go as quickly as possible and grow their top line as quickly as possible. And that's what we're committed to. Yeah. We're providing access to thousands of enterprise customers, streamlining their route to market through the AWS marketplace. And I love the examples that we share. Um, I mean, John, you talked about you were at reInvent uh, last year and you have been for the past 14 years. You may recall from the partner keynote in 2023, I featured Drada, which is a San Diego startup that launched in 2020. So just a few years ago, they offer a compliance and security SaaS platform that automates a compliance workflow on a company's security controls. They made their solution available in the AWS marketplace in 2022. In 2022. Since then, 40% of their revenue has transacted through the AWS marketplace, and they attribute a significant portion of their growth to the partnership with AWS. I mean, that is product-led growth, self-service, all through the AWS marketplace. And we're excited that we're providing them the speed to reaching customers, the scale and the relevance to reach customers and increasing their brand reach and simplifying their process for their customers to onboard, to deploy, to reduce the time to value that Drata can provide them. That's just one example that we're really excited about of helping startups with the most important value driver, speed. You know, it's a, that was a great point. I was going to actually go to the marketplace place next, I'm glad you brought that up. I think you guys have a great formula because it go back again, back to how you guys have grown your value now for startups. Yeah, I get the building blocks, I get a SaaS app, it's out in the world, it gets downloaded, I grow, thanks very much, good, customers get benefit. But you guys are working back from the customer and it's more complex now, but you're making it just as easy for the startups. So one, accelerating startups, love that. The marketplace is huge because startups actually care about their baby they're building, right? They love what they have and they want to get distribution of that application and they want customers and they want to get revenue, right? They got to make money. So you're seeing them work on harder problems, okay? With ease of use and revenue. Okay, so I think that's a one-two punch. I mean, I think you get the, you get the enablement, forget the, get them to be ISVs fast and, and bigger companies. You get revenue through the marketplace for distribution. Um, so that is a winning formula and they could take advantage of all the, all the goodness of AWS. The question I have for you is, what are you guys doing as that's matured on the, on, under the covers, the game is still the same. I got to move fast. I got to give uh, the customers good product. What are you guys doing to bring the programmatic aspect of what used to be for big ISVs down to the startups? Because now startups are punching way above their pay grade right now because they can. What are you guys doing to accelerate them from either soft dollars? How do you get them in the marketplace? What are you guys doing to make that easy? Can you share any programs you have? Do you guys have incentives? What is the, what's in it for the startup? Okay, I buy, the, I buy the value. What's the one, two, three punch? 
So AWS Marketplace is a great service for our startup partners. And maybe I'll just give a little bit of a description of it for folks that may not be as familiar with it. So the AWS Marketplace, it's a curated digital catalog that makes it easy for customers to discover solutions, deploy them, and govern those solutions. So from a customer perspective, they have one AWS bill and they can procure and they can find and procure all of these different third-party apps that are built on AWS or solutions solutions that are built on AWS. They can also procure professional services from there. Now, you said one really important thing, John, which is that you know these were benefits that used to just be for large ISVs or, or large technology providers, and now we're, we're making them accessible for everyone. It, we've always made it accessible for startups, but I want to share how one large ISV is taking advantage of the AWS marketplace. So if you listened to Salesforce's last earnings call, you would have heard that three of their top 10 deals went through the AWS marketplace. They just got on the AWS marketplace at the end of last year. So to hear that now it's not just kind of volume or, or you know, some folks think the AWS marketplace is just for volume, not for huge deals. If Salesforce, one of the incredible ISVs out there in the world is seeing three of their top 10 deals going through the AWS marketplace. I just described the example of Drata, how they have 40% of their business going through the AWS marketplace. You're seeing how startups and large ISVs are being able to transact through marketplace. So what are we doing to help them? Um, number one, we are providing a better, we're continuing to invest in the AWS marketplace. You've interviewed Matt Yanchishin multiple times. Every single year we are increasing the number of features that we are deploying on the AWS marketplace to allow customers to transact where they are. So whether it's integrating with different uh, storefronts to allow customers to reach the AWS marketplace and all of the partners through that, whether it's investing in features like vendor insights, which helps customers learn which vendors they can work with that meet their compliance and security needs. But from a startup perspective, we've been investing in some programmatic things that help them get the most value out of it. So number one, how do they differentiate themselves through competencies. We're launching a startup competency. We know that 87% of customers look at a company's competencies before they decide who to transact with. They also review the companies that they partner with's competencies uh, multiple times a year. 74% of customers review competencies multiple times a year. So this startup competency allows these organizations that maybe haven't been able to differentiate themselves, differentiate themselves in a faster way. And it's tailor-made just for startups. We're also really excited to provide them with incentives and benefits to accelerate uh, certain functions that maybe they haven't built out. So marketing investments, joint marketing investments, we've heard from many startups that that's actually something they really value. And so this year we're expanding the marketing investments that we're providing to startups by connecting them to agencies that specialize in marketing for the technologies, uh, technology customers that they serve. And then last but not least is incentives for all parties. So what am I talking about? Incentives for the startups, by getting them faster route to market through the AWS marketplace. Incentive for customers who can draw down on their AWS commitments on third-party solutions if transacted through the AWS marketplace. And for startups, this is a game changer because it really allows uh, customers to consider them a lot more strongly if they're considered part of the AWS value proposition. And then incentives for our field to co-sell with them so that our field is also compensated when they're selling third-party solutions that run on AWS. You know our history, John. You know that AWS is customer obsessed and we always work backwards from the customer. And that includes the third Third party solutions that run on AWS and startups that provide the leading edge technology to customers are one way that we do that and we're committed to. So one example I'm excited about is Orca Security. Um, they actually won Security uh, uh, ISV of the year two years ago at reInvent, but they have grown on AWS Marketplace 800% year over year. So it's incredible to see a company in a space that is like security, which is extremely fragmented, able to grow triple digit percentages year over year through the AWS marketplace. And we want to do that for all of our startup partners. Yeah, awesome examples, great, great uh, benefits. You guys are committed to the startups. They're the future of the lifeblood of the industry. And again, congratulations and, and thanks for doing that. Startups 
it's a make or break moment for them. They, one little thing could make them mega successful. And I think having all that in place is great. We know Orca, they were featured on our startup showcase uh, with AWS. So we, we know them very well. Congratulations to them. Final question. I know you got to go back to the event. Um, you've been in the industry for a while. You've seen many ways of innovation. You've seen the partner network grow at AWS from small growing to large scale partners. Um, you guys are innovating on behalf of customers. I got to ask you with this generative AI wave, what is the biggest thing you're taking away from the ecosystem as you look at the global specialists and all the partners and the range of alliances as well? What is the big takeaway for you as you look at the industry and look out in that 20 mile stare and see the future frontier there? Love that question, and it's your, my answer is not going to be a surprise to you, John. I think the future of generative AI and the future of technology is the partner network. All of the solutions that you see there adding value to customers, they require multiple players. Um, whether it's multiple technology vendors coming together with AWS, with system integrators to create these solutions for our customers to transform their businesses, to reinvent how they do things like customer experience, to reinvent how they run their supply chain, how they run their back office and front office to build off of the example you gave before, um, the future is partner oriented, and that's why we're continuing to double down our investment on partners. And I'm really excited to, to be here to continue building on that. But I think that we're going to see more and more partnerships as a result of generative AI. Well, we'll be watching. We'll see it reinvent. Again, we love open, we love community, we love ecosystems. And you're seeing that formula flywheel kick in now. And this is now standard operating procedure. Every company we talk to is launching partner connections ecosystem and ultimately community with customers too. Everyone's talking to each other on digital technology. So we're now at this next level and totally agree with you. The partner and alliance connections make the solutions happen. Thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate your time. Thank you, John. Okay, Rupa Born is here, VP of Scopal Specialists and Partners. Ecosystems are super important as people collaborate. You're seeing a lot more sharing. Certainly generative AI is about sharing. It's about open systems, open source, large scale, and data, and people are working together. And again, this is just the beginning of this next wave. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE here in Palo Alto. Thanks for watching.